fucking grilling it. We are live. Three, Wheel. two, one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Amal and joining me tonight, I have Andy, Andy's cat, Moose and George. And we are the Monday Blues. Andy's cat is the replacement for Carl, who is out with patellar tendonitis. <laughs> He'll be a week. Shout out, Henny, my cat. Welcome, shout welcome to Carl. the show, Cat Henny. And uh, a quick shout out to Carl, who couldn't make it um, tonight. For those watching he's along, on, uh, Eid, Eid commitments, he said to. Eid uh, commitments, correct, correct. Um, Eid Mubarak to all those that are celebrating. Um, it's been good. It's been good. I've got a story to tell. But before we do, let's quickly go around the grounds and see how the week has been off the back of Gather Round. Andy, I'll start with you. Week's been all right. Week's been good. Um, just keen for the footy, man. I don't know. Nothing really matters <laughs> during the week. I just I want the footy to start. So, yeah, just pretty keen to get going, man. How about you, boys? I, I you got a lot. I schedule a lot around the the weekend and the footy fixture. I was just going to say, so I'm, I'm right there with you, Andy. I think the week is we, we we just look forward to the weekend. Footy gives a bit of structure, and it's nice having footy games on a Thursday night as well. Um, it feels like the weekend starts a bit earlier, so no, it's been good. Um, work is work. I, I want to shout out a, a bloke I met at work who actually tunes into our uh, reviews and previews. Mark I met a met a guy by the name of Mark today, so shout out to you, Mark. Thanks for tuning in. Great to meet you, mate. Love you, Mike. My name is Amal, by the way. <laughs> Moose? Uh, I didn't realise we were back. I'm still on the way back from Adelaide. Um, as you can see, I'm in the car and uh, yeah, still not home yet. Andy, Andy, decided, Andy decided to drop off uh, Moose at, at Neil, I think it was, on the way to on the way back from Adelaide. <laughs> Had enough of it. Done. Hopefully I'm back before uh, this week's game. Before the game. Before the game, so it's half time currently. Uh, uh, Melbourne, Brisbane, which is obviously the reason why we're going live. But Brisbane is absolutely putting on a show at the moment. They're looking like they they may have come back to some sort of form um, against Melbourne at the G as well, which isn't normally a, a strength of theirs playing at the G. But good to see, good to see. Um, but aside from that, round five, Saturday, thirteenth of April, two thousand and twenty-four, at four thirty-five p.m. Carlton will be taking on the Adelaide Crows at Marvel Stadium. How are we feeling about this one, gents? Let Georgie take this one, I reckon. Just, just really quickly, I was going to say, we've got the same time slot for the next three weeks, I think, until the Collingwood game. Consistency. Saturday, 4.35. So we got Crows, weird GWS, Geelong, I'm pretty sure. And then, yeah, so Arvo slot, oh, Bring anyone, anywhere, anytime. So, no, look, I'm, I'm feeling, um, I'm wary. I'm a little bit wary, right? I'm confident, but I'm wary, right? So, uh, Adelaide, winless, Carlton, undefeated. Fuck, it feels, just feels nice to say that, undefeated, four and zip. Um, it's silly to think that it's going to be a walk in the park. It's like just my thoughts. It's it's They're winless, and they're absolutely playing for their season. Um, Knicks is under the pump. Is. I still feel confident. I, I still feel like if we if we focus a bit more on the clearance game, so I feel like they're going to try and use that. You know, as a, it's a weakness of ours. Well, not necessarily a weakness. It's been a weakness <laughs> of ours this year. I feel like they're going to try and exploit that. But uh, Mister Dior Dior is back, and I'm I'm Dior, confident that Dior. we can get up in the midfield. So how good is it? How good? It's good to have him back. It's it just jeed me up today. I don't know. Like I was I was looking forward to the game already, but seeing that while she was going to be named. And seeing the Carlton online community just kind of – everybody had a post. Everybody had multiple posts. Everyone was just keen. So, yeah, just put a bit of a extra pep in my step today, knowing while she was in. What about you, Moose? Yeah, keen as, mate. What can I say? Uh, looking forward to it. It's been a while since he's been on the ground. Hopefully he can get up and um, we see uh, a better, stronger midfield. Yeah, he he returned against Adelaide last year as well, Andy. I think it was a gather round. He, he it was his game back. It if was, I recall correctly. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, it, it, I'm fairly confident oh, that was the same. I so, hope yeah. it's not a repeat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, I'm not going to lie. That that I, I have thought about that today because Walsh did return. He was best on ground from memory as well when he returned last year against Adelaide. But it was a walloping. Like we got smashed everywhere else around mm -hmm. the ground, and then they kicked. 
so it's not going to happen again, mate. But yeah, that, that, that whilst the thought has crossed my mind, I don't think um, that it's going to happen. I think I think we should win this pretty comfortably. Weird to say that. Weird to say that because we haven't been playing our best footy. But it's not like last year where we weren't playing our best footy. Mm. But there was a it was like a negative vibe around. You know, you just didn't know. I'll use the word false, false economy, but now it's different. Now it's different. And and not only are we saying that like Carlton supporters, but, you know, even the the media pundits are saying the same thing. They're saying that whilst we haven't been playing our greatest footy, there is so much upside to this team at the moment. Mm. Um, and that's really nice. Unusual feeling, but nice. We'll take it. We'll take it. Let's get into the teams, man. Let's do it. I just can't wait till you read uh, S. Walsh. <laughs> Three Three votes. Votes. <laughs> give him three the, already. Um, <laughs> we'll start with the back line. Uh, Carlton's back line Brody Kemp, Jacob Wiedering, Nick Newman, Adam Saad, Mitch McGovern, Zach Williams going up against the forward line of Jake Saligo, Isaac Rankin, J- Josh Rochelle, Ned McHenry, Darcy Fogarty, and Taylor Walker. Uh, midfields for Carlton Ollie Hollands, Paddy Cripps, Blake Akers, and following Tom DeConning, Adam Chair, and George Hewitt gone up against Mitchell Hinge, Jordan Dawson, Chase Jones, uh, following Riley O'Brien, Rory Laird, and Ben Keys. He always smashes us, but I'm sure we'll probably talk about that in a sec. Forward line for Carlton Elijah Hollands, whose injury wasn't as bad as what it looked like last week. He remains in the team, which is, to be honest, pretty surprising. Harry Mackay, Matty Kennedy, Aratio Fantasia. Charlie Kerno, Matty Owies going up against the backline of Luke Nankervis, Jordan Butts, Brody Smith, Will Hamill, mm-hmm. Mark Keane, and Max Michalala. <laughs> yeah, right. right eh? How about the maturity level of all of us? He said Butts and that's not a lot. Sorry. Interchange, interchange bench for Carlton, Jordan Boyd, Jack Carroll, uh, Matty Cottrell, Sam Walsh, Corey Durden, Sam Walsh on the interchange bench. Could he be sub? Your... <laughs> Stop it, Andy. I don't know what that <laughs> was, I'm, I'm, but... I'm, I'm just, I'm not ignoring him out. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to move. I mean, could he be, like, could they start him a sub? I think the fans will riot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Imagine the, like, the, 10, 10 minutes into the first quarter, sub him on, sub him <laughs> on. It's, it's like 40,000 people just yelling. No, I don't. I don't think that will happen. I don't think that will happen. Sorry, let's go. Change, interchange bench oh, yeah. for Adelaide: Josh Worrell, Sam Berry, Matt Crouch, Braden Cook, Lockie uh, Gallant. Uh, emergencies for Carlton: Jackson Bins, Lockie Cow- uh, Cowan, and Mark Pirine. Emergencies for Adelaide: Billy Dowling, James Borlase, and Chris Burgess. Mm. There we go. There we Look, go. We should we should go into this game. Um, very confident. We're a much better team than we were 12 months ago when we played them. Um, we're a lot more rounded, I feel. We're a lot more grounded as well. So this should be should be 10-goal win for me. <laughs> Look, I mean, let's be real, but Adelaide can't score. Adelaide struggles to score at the moment. And as long as we do – as long as we defend correctly – and, and staunchly, they won't kick more than seven goals for the game. And we'll oh, wow. kick 20. We'll kick 20. What's, what do you think? Um, for me, I, I'm just looking for a bit more win in the midfield, you know, getting a bit more easy contest, getting a bit more easy ball, winning that contested ball out of the midfield as well. I don't think Walsh is probably going to be a starter in the midfield. I think you'll sort of see a little bit of him sort of... <clears throat> Cross the wing and potentially come into some, you know, contested ball. Oh, that'd be silly to throw him straight in the middle. Why? Um, just, just ease him back in. Oh, I don't feel that he needs to be amongst it straight away. But I don't know. Could be wrong. We'll see. That's my gut instinct. I have a feeling he'll sort of potentially start at a half forward. Yeah, I don't mind that. I mean, he's back. He, he, he's had. This is the second time he's had back issues. I don't, I don't, I don't mm. mind him playing. Like, no position is easy in footy, right? It's a rough game. It's, mm. a, it's, a, it's a brutal game, but. Obviously, the midfield is probably the toughest of them all. So I don't, I don't mind him starting maybe on the you know, half back or half forward or whatever it may be, even mm. on the wing. He's got a great. Yeah, on, on paper, I sort of concur with Andy. I think we've, you know, in theory, we should win by ten goals, but it, it sort of just depends on. It's not necessarily which Carlton rocks up, but it just sort of depends on how the game pans out and sort of what happens at that opening bounce. You know, are we going to sort of 
take a step back and sort of see what happens and take it from there and then sort of kick into gear or are we going to go hammer and tong from, you know, first bounce? So, you know, we should win by 10, but, you know, we'll see what happens. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, Adelaide that bad. I'm backtracking a little bit here, but uh, Adelaide that bad that, or are we that good? Because we're good. I, I I think we're that good that we can beat any team by ten goals. But uh, Adelaide that bad at the moment because they they were what one a goal umpiring mistake away from making finals. So, but they significantly took like they significantly dropped off this year, mm-hmm. and they were meant to obviously climb a bit higher this year. But you know, based on projection of form and and play development and whatnot, like that, mm-hmm. they're a damaging side when they're on. Like they they look very very damaging, but they they drop off this year. And I guess it, it coincides with a few players being down off form. Don't forget, like we're, like the last couple of times we played these guys, um, yeah, Ben, ben Keys, Rory Laird, uh, Miller Miller is not playing. I think he's out. But um, these guys, we we make them look like. You know, multiple all Australian, you know, absolute weapons, and 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 a message for Saad. Saad, I know it's been a big week, bro. I know you're probably full on Mahmoud, and you had all the Kanefa, and you've just been absolutely, you know, celebrating, and and you're probably full and just, you know, a little bit tired and stuff now, bro. Ben Keys, I know he's been in your dreams every now and then, you know, in his nightmares, in his nightmares. Just <laughs> focus, bro. Focus, please. <laughs> <laughs> this is the week. I'd like no, think about it. Like Saad will be yeah. in his head. He'd be like, "I want to put it over this guy. I want to fucking put it over this guy." Ben Keys um, has Saad in his back pocket, bro. Just, mm. just every every time, bro. I know, and 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 Saad, Saad will know that. And 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 we laugh about you know we have a, a chuckle sort of you know when we're talking about say ten goal win. But hey, if if you're Voss and you're the playing group and you go into any fixture and you say we can beat anyone, we can, we absolutely can. If it's our day, we can beat anyone, anywhere, anytime. We've proven that. Now, this is the one where you say, hey, like, not just percentage booster, put the foot on the throat. These guys are vulnerable. These guys are down now. They're going to come out fighting. They're going to come out swinging. Don't even let them have a sniff, right? Put them out of there. Put put them out, you know, kill their season. Put the uh, final nail in the coffin. Uh, It's on our home turf. There's no, you know... um, There's no having to sort of, you know, I I guess uh, be... We're not in a hostile territory. You know, it's at Marvel. It's it's not Adelaide Oval like it was last year. We went in, it was three one and one. Um, all of a sudden, it's at Adelaide Oval. It's you know whatever eighty percent Adelaide, and, and and they they created that. You remember Andy? They created that really hostile mm-hmm. territory after the yep. first few goals. They were loud and feral, yeah. right? It's our home base. We're undefeated. We're playing. Uh, we haven't we haven't played our best football. We all can confidently say that we've got we're, we're, a lot of areas for improvement. So why why can't we? Why can't we have a solid, comfortable win? I'd love to see us absolutely bury a side. Yeah. Even better if it's Adelaide. Even better after the last couple of years. And don't forget, I mean, if if Saad is really struggling with Keys tomorrow, and, and you're right, Keys has absolutely owned Saad in the last couple of uh, meetings. Got another bloke in the name of Zach Williams um, that might be able to take him on. Or do you reckon he's too much of a different player? No, nah, no chance. I think I think Saad's run is 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 um, his best weapon, where I think Zach Williams' finesse is kind of his mm. best weapon. So, I mean, look, why not? Yeah, <laughs> give it a go. Mm. But I just think as a competitor, I want to see Saad take keys on again and get the chocolates at the end of the day because surely that's got to burn you as a, as a competitor to have this one guy that's just put it on you every every you know, time you faced him. So, mm. Keys kicked, kicked a couple of goals um, on us last year, right? At Gather Round. Yep. Yep. And, and, he, and the time and that... before was that that <laughs> that hideous game over there when I think we just needed to beat him and we'd play finals in 22, I think it was. So, Keys yeah. just dominated. That's when Cripps had, had 40. I think Walsh had 40. Like, it was... And and we just didn't win. We just played like garbage. So that was a bad one. No, yeah. a, a spot on. I think Side will be taking this personally. Side will be telling boss, let me at him. Um, yeah. He'll want to set the record straight. So I'm 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 super excited to see that match up. And I'm I'm, I'm also um, surprised with uh, Elijah. Like he, you know, he's probably going to have to get through a bit. Um, like even on the day as well. He, I'll probably 
have him as a watch, to be honest with you. Um, he was obviously in all sorts of, yeah, when I seen him at the airport, bloke was struggling. Mm. Um, he was limping quite a fair bit, so he would have been a bit ginger, obviously, at early training sessions this week. So uh, I reckon there's a, just a watch on him. Mm. Yeah. If, if he's a laid out, Georgie, who comes in? Well, that's a very good question. Um, who's in the emergencies at the moment? The Because uh, Cunning's, uh, Cunning's injured, Martin's injured, Motlock's injured. Hit on it. Hit on it. Let me have a look. Sorry, I've just on the wrong list. While, while, you, while that, you're doing that, Amal. Yeah, I was just about to mention, um, mm. this is the first time I've seen this. Obviously, we've, we've only just hit 1,000 subscribers, so we've been able, able to t switch on a few more features. But Oz8 uh, is officially the first person to send... <laughs> Um, a donation to our channel and uh, on behalf of the Monday Blues, thank you very much for that. His comment was, this is Carlton's best start uh, to a year since 1995. Um, thank first, you, Oz. On behalf Oz, of all of us. Oz cheers. Thank you, man. Cheers. Um, hopefully we see it at the game. Maybe we can use that two bucks to buy you a drink or something like that. Um, <laughs> and secondly, I hope that doesn't jinx it. Nah. It's our year, boys. And there's no jinx anymore. There is no jinx at Carlton anymore. I'm telling you. Undefeated. As long as George doesn't drink. As long as George doesn't drink. That's right. <laughs> as long as Georgie stays off the did bed. Did you, actually, did you crack a drink towards the end of the game at Frio? Uh, ab ab Frio? Absolutely not. So, so that, well, the funny thing behind that is, for anyone who tuned into the review as well, is um, when the bloke uh, from Chemist Warehouse or wherever he was, and he said, you want, you know, VIP seating, food and beverage package, walk along the ground and all that kind of stuff. We get there and it's unlimited food, catering and all that. And he's like, hey, mate, like whatever you want from the bar, it's free. Like we'll bring it to you. I'm like, you mother. Like, <laughs> I go, bro, I can't be seen with a drink in my hand. I absolutely cannot. Um, I'm really sorry. He's like, oh, sorry. Are you, like, are you religious or you can't drink or anything? I go, bro, no, I, I, I'm not going to explain it, but I'm not allowed to drink at the football. He's like, oh, do you? You're going to cause a scene or something. <laughs> so it was, yeah, it was uh, at, at the at the siren because of all the the hostility, the Frio crowds, and and um, the, the just the nervous tension and whatnot. I'm like, on the way out, I'm going to grab, I'll grab a fifth, crack one open after the siren. So on but, you, Georgie. Uh, yeah, I like yeah, how he, circle, he went around in circles with that one, George. I need a solid answer. Did you drink before the final siren? I did not, Mustafa. I did not. <laughs> Is that good well, enough? That'll do. <laughs> uh, emergencies with Jackson Bins, uh, Lockie Cowan, and Mark Pudney. Has Cowan debuted? He has, yeah, yeah. hasn't he? Cowan. Yes. Remember Fair when? The, remember when the crowd mood? <laughs> ah, yes, 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 yes. How did you guys feel about that? I don't Fantastic. Mind. Blue Wolf. Sorry. Need, I I absolutely hated it. <laughs> I hated it, boys. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I tried to just be like, you know what? Let's go with it, but nah. <laughs> Please like don't moo at games. Please don't. <laughs> that was that was something else, man. <laughs> oh, geez. Geez. I want to see Jackson Bins get a game. That's who I want to see come in. If who was it that might be a laid Holland. out? It? Holland. I'm just yeah. speculating. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If 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 he's a laid out, I would love to see Jackson Bins get a game. He absolutely killed it last year in the VFL. So, yeah. Deserves a run. Deserves a run. Absolutely. Uh, now, last week against Frio, obviously, uh, Matty always was the was a super sub. Came on, had a really, really good game. Um, kicked two goals, I think it was. Um, and came on uh, and was able to sort of put some speed on the ball, which was really, really good to see. Now, given our interchange bench with Jordan Board, Jack Carroll, Matty Cottrell, Sam Walsh, you'd think those four would would be sitting on the bench and po quite possibly Corey Durden will be the sub. Uh, how do we feel about that? Yeah, I'm good. I don't care. We're oh. going to win. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Straight out. I just want to see the game. You know, I just want the game to just come. I want to I want to see a solid effort from everyone and I want us to win. Georgie, you can answer the question. So, so I'm just keen. Sorry, Mal, was it who's going to be or how do you feel about the interchange and who's going to be the sub? Uh, so it's <clears throat> given that always came on last week as, as um, the sub for the Frio game, I'm, I'm just assuming here that Corey Durden will be the super sub, hopefully. Durden, Durden done okay last week too. Like he, he had like a few a number of tackles inside 50. I think it was like yeah. seven or eight inside 50. So his pressure was was very good. Um, and, and you're going to need that against, you know, their, their, their backs and their half backs. So yeah. 
Uh, look, based on based on Walsh back in, like looking at the interchange, Boyd, Carroll, Cotters, Durden, Walsh, it, it probably one of Durden or Carroll for me, um, and 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 probably is going to be Durds. I'd say, yeah. You can't have Carroll as so. Carroll. Carroll played last week, didn't he? Yep. He's the left yep. uh, player. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sixteen. The time, yep. the time it takes for him to get ball to foot is like slow motion. Especially in last week's game, it was such a such a hotly contested game. I've watched the replay a couple of times now, and and every single time the ball was in, at a stoppage, there was players everywhere. Like you had no time; you really had to be quick with the ball. But Carroll just seemed that little bit slower than everyone else. Um, I think he's a great player. I think he just needs to quicken that up a bit. Anyway, you see, but just, I just think just adjusting. I reckon, Georgie, sorry, to cut you. just adjusting. Right. I think you know, big 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 gap between you know. The elite AFL, and he and he's jumped. You know, I think Andy, you called that he was starting in all the center contests or a few of the center mm. contests. So, a uh, testament to him. You know, it's going to take a while to probably pick up and get to the AFL yeah. level for the speed and that True. sort of thing. But if they're backing him to throw him in there in the contest when the game's up in the air, well, there's a lot. So, I, I hope I hope that he can sort of develop that and sort of pick it up. And um, yeah, it'd be good to see him actually. How, how good is it seeing him get a run like he? But but in contrast, if you recall, um, in the in the re- opening round against Brisbane, he was just slamming it on the foot like he was just. But his weaving was 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 great. Um, I did want to call just just thinking about. I thought about it with the small forwards. Fog out is 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 big, right? Well, it's funny yeah. funny you say that. So I was just gonna give a quick shout out to Jay Baggers in the comment who asked me, "Hey Andy, Morris must be devastated about fog, mate. We all are. Fog's pressure." has been off the charts since he's come into the side last year. So that's a big loss for us, yeah? That's why I reckon the club actually didn't contest the um, hit, right? Because I I don't think he should have been suspended for that. I think he didn't get him in the head. But I reckon the club just said, you know what? He's got a stuffed hand. Save some money. Save some money. (laughs) Let's just, you know, not appeal it, cop the hit. But that's a big loss for us. And, And I don't think that should be... Yeah, I don't think that should be underestimated. Just how big that loss is, because he's he's pressure. I mean, across the ground, but in that forward half of the ground, has been exceptional since he's come in. So we are going to miss that, like wholly. I feel, but again, opportunities. Yeah, someone else has an opportunity to be that enforcer, to be that person, to say, "Follow me, boys. This is the pressure. This is the standard." So I'm hoping that. I mean, it could be Durden, Yeah. It could be, it could be Carol, just someone like someone to say, you know what, we, we've got a gap there. This is my opportunity to stake my claim to this position. Mm. So let's do it, man. Now, when it, we, it's, it's pivotal because he keeps the ball locked in, but when he rotates through the midfield and his tackling is great. So you got Kennedy needs to, to step up and make sure that he's, um, you know, t- firm at the contest. Durden always um, keeping the ball inside 50 as well. Kennedy's been obviously playing inside 50 as well, but having that tackle pressure to keep the ball in because Fogg has just been, since the Gold Coast game last year when he came in. He's um, been non-stop. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Now, obviously Sam Walsh is coming back in. It's round five. He's missed a couple of games. Uh, but if we take in his... Uh, his his form coming to the end of the season last year and obviously into finals he won the was the Gary Ayers medal or whatever it is um, best finals player right question from Cameron Bayer boys now that Walsh is good thoughts on him doing what Dacos couldn't in winning the Brownlow having not played all games Morse what do you think I'd love to say yes I just think at the moment. With where our team is and the structure and the game plan we've got, he's probably not going to get the chance or the ability. And I don't think we're just going to throw him in the midfield and go run amok. It's not going to be that. So I don't think he's probably going to get the opportunity, if anything, to sort of play that role. Um, I think he's a piece in the puzzle. He's a massive piece in the puzzle, but he's not going to, you know, just walk in and get 40 touches every game and be that player. Um, that's my That's my view anyway. I pray to God he does because I put a lot of money on him to win the Brown <laughs> before the season started. So I'm praying. I'm praying to everyone. Hey, Whoever's might listening. To, might have to contend with Harry, bro. That's yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Harry's yeah, like, hey, Harry will be on yeah, probably old, eight, eight or nine votes at the moment. Yeah. 
<clears throat> I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a poll up in the chat. Let's see what uh, everyone else thinks. Can Walsh win the Brownlow? So I asked some questions on uh, Instagram. I asked if anyone wanted us to discuss anything, and just going through uh, going through some of them. I mean, some of them are a bit out there. Some people are a bit silly. Hint, hint. Zach, our friend, is uh, bagging me out about the way I say Tuesday or pizza. <laughs> which is annoying, but there was a good question here. Okay, what's the worst thing we could do this week? And what's the best thing we could do this week? I really like this. What's 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 the best thing? Let's start with the positive. What's the best thing we can get out of this week? Mm. Other than Te- a win, obviously. Technically four points, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Other I, than a win. For, for me, like the best thing you could do is that we've been, we've, we've highlighted for me that we're, we're struggling with the clearances, right? Yeah. Yeah. We didn't we didn't have a knee jerk reaction and say, bring in Pitto. Um and let's see if that changes something. We stick like TD, TDK done very well last week against Jackson, right? We probably didn't get first hands to the con to the contest. You know, it was, it was you know uh, fumbly and slippery and, and Frio got first hands to it and, and won the clearance game. So I like that we backed TDK. Um, you know, to, to, as the sole ruckman and Harry as the backup. The best thing would be to win the clearance battle out of the midfield, because if we do that, game over. We're, we're like we're gonna we can run away with this. Um, we've identified that it was a huge strength for us, obviously um, last year and even twenty twenty two, and we've identified that it's something that we're lacking with this year. So if if, if we can, we've we've shown that we're a great ball carrying team. If we can lift that contest and that clearance game up, tick, Agreed. tick, tick. Agreed. I think that's that that would be my best outcome too. Other than the win, seeing us get some clearance ball and, and get the, get our clearance game going again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, it's the um, <clears throat> same sentiment in the chat as well with Peter V. Blue Bagger. Worst is another heart stopper. Mm-hmm. I can't deal with that. I'm getting sick. I'm getting sick of these close wins. Um, and the best is a six-goal plus win, and we win clearances and stoppages um, whilst continuing our form with scores mm. in turnovers and, and and everything like that. Most, what's your best case other than a win? Uh, I'm gonna say it's probably gonna you know mirror sort of what you guys are saying, but for me, it's putting in a full quarter effort and not having those little lapses and not having to build into something, starting steadily, finishing steadily, and just being consistent and not being reactive. Get the game mm. on our terms where we're not watching what other teams are doing or mirroring or mm. man. Just get the game on our terms from get-go, finish it, four-quarter effort, um, and walk away. with. It, it doesn't matter how many goals because, you know, five goals, six goals, seven goals, it doesn't really matter as long as you get that four-quarter effort. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What about worst other than a loss? Harry McKay kicking 10. <laughs> He's just making you look silly after that. <laughs> uh, no, I'm gonna say. Look, I hate. I hate to you know, you know, bring this up, but it's probably injuries, man. Oh, for me, that's probably the worst case scenario. I'd rather go down in a good game than cop injuries that are gonna change our mm. you know, season. So stay injury yeah. free. Yeah. I think another thing that I'd like to see this week is just uh, us looking at like lowering our eyes as we try and enter into our forward 50. Like I know we've got Charlie Kuna and I know we've got Harry Mackay, but just try and hit them up on the lead instead of bombing it long and letting, uh, letting it get to a contest. I know that's our, that's our, that's our strong point. That's how we've won so many games, but you know, lower your eyes. Fantasia is really good at it. We've, we've seen that so far a couple of times from him in, in, in a few of the games. Um, and really, like I can't, I can't really think of anyone. Oh, Chera, Chera is another one that likes to send him in uh, short and sharp, quite low as well. Other than that, a lot of our entries into Ford Fifty are tall and high and long and everything like that. Just please, please, it would be good to see a bit more um, entries into Ford Fifty coming in low, please. You know what I don't want to see? That's a fair, fair point too, Amar. What I don't want to see this week, and I think what could be like something we really need to work on. I don't want us to kick nine goals, fifteen, or like yeah. I don't. I, I want to see more goals than behinds. Yeah, I think it's important. It's it's like so important for us to take our chances. We would have blown Freo out of the water early if we took our chances, and we had some serious chances. We did. So we just yeah. need to kick straight, man. Just fucking kick straight. I don't know. It does more hitting. 
Chera kicked a goal early, and then he just has this habit of just swinging around and snapping him, and probably ended up on one two, one three, or something. Felt like he scored one nine. Mm. Um, Cotters, just, Cotters had that one bad miss as well. He yeah. redeemed himself, but he had one where he he probably should have taken should have taken a, a, an extra couple steps or whatnot. Harry falling went, over. Look, we just need to take our chances. Look at the smile look at, look at the on pleasure. his face. Look at the, look at the absolute face. smile on that guy's face. <laughs> he couldn't hold it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, I'll tell you what. Hating is on special, and Moose has filled up his trolley. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, it's, a, it's a great question. And before we go to the next one, I think like it's, it's a good one. And also, I just what do you want to see? I just thought about a passage. I was like, I want to see Saad sell some candy to Keys and then hit one from 50. Just imagine that. That'd the raw. Nice. Or even nice. the, the raw after a Walsh goal this week will be. Oh, know, him when Walsh kicks a goal. Iconic, you know, the Absolutely. Iconic. It would but be brilliant. M- Monique has a comment here, which I couldn't agree more with. We need to stop handballing so much. When we're in that fifty, because we just we we've always we're trying to go backwards in handball, trying to find some mate. The amount of times we've had players who have enough time to to set and and shoot, and they just and and always that one extra handball that gets us into strife, and then we're just you know having to fang it quickly. Is so, that unselfishness, or is that do you think just a, a co- like confidence in taking the shot? Probably both. I think it's, yeah. I think it's also like perceived pressure. Yeah. So maybe it was because we we're playing Frio and their defensive pressure is so you know full on, but it just it felt like we weren't committed to taking a shot. So and and the only shots we, we ended up taking were those quick around the corner ones, which are just sneaking in for behinds. So yeah, it's something. Look, like we said earlier, there's a lot of upside. You know, and that's a good thing. We're winning while there's plenty of upside. So as long as we just keep ticking over the wins, percentage won't matter. You know, as long as we just keep ticking those W's over. But I'd love a bit of percentage. And I think we'll get it this week, boys. I think I'm, I'm quietly confident. I get stuck into them. But yeah. don't, but hey, you can't sledge. No sledging because we know what, <laughs> what no happens. Sledging. <laughs> Speaking of that, I had a question. I had a couple of people ask me actually. Quick thoughts, Jeremy Finlayson. Don't want personal opinions. Don't care. Should he have been suspended? Yes or no? Moose. Uh, I don't know. I'm actually unsure. Hmm. Amal. Um, look, I, I I haven't been on an AFL footy field to know exactly what gets said, right? I'm sure there's worse things that have been said, whether they get picked mm-hmm. up by the mics or not. Is Finlayson unlucky for it to be to have been picked up by the mic? I can almost guarantee worse things get say get mm-hmm. said away from the mics. Should it really be a ban just because it got picked up? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it's Georgie bad. has bad. a joke incoming. I can see a little smirk <laughs> popping up. I can see a hey, smirk. He got suspended for saying a bad effort against an Essendon player. What? Finals? Finals? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's only been 7,159 days since the last time Essendon <laughs> won a final. <laughs> so I had to put that in there. No, no, like in, all, in all seriousness, um, he he knows he, he he stuffed up and he knows he can't say that this this day and age right so I guess for consistency like you you cop, you cop it and you say you know suspended yeah uh, what it one week I think well Clarko got the suspended three game ban and twenty k I think it was so I, I don't know if they differentiate they what, wanted to make an yeah. example or differentiate it so like I, I'm all for all right give him a week you know put him in a um you know make him do an a, 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 you know a, a, a a course or something like that or whatnot, right? So then you're actually saying this was the action and this is the repercussion of your actions or whatnot, and then just sort yourself out. Rather like the three weeks, like making a, a, a you know a more severe ban, is that going to be any different than than actually putting him on a pathway to say like one week on a course or, or you know a bit of whatever a one on one session with someone in the community, whatever. Like just like 
I think the three weeks versus the one, what's the like what difference is that gonna make for me? Do they want to set an example, obviously, right? Mm. See, the, the my, issue my here, opinion, uh, yeah, so much. Yeah, I was gonna say the issue here as well, they kind of need to be careful because you're kind of gonna start setting precedents and all of a sudden you're gonna put mics everywhere, and no one can breathe. All of a sudden you can't even talk. You know, you're out there playing the game like it, it's it's tough. And, and you've played the game, so yeah. you know, occasionally yeah. something slips out. It, it does, whether you like mm-hmm. it or not. Well, you could always come out like the, the Fremantle player. What's his name? The one that swore at the umpire. By, um, <laughs> and then just say that, hey, I didn't swear at the umpire. I swore at myself. So why didn't Finn Mason use that strategy? And and a, and a very good comment. you're not um, going to call from... yourself a baguette. You know what I mean? Fuck. <laughs> 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 come on, <laughs> A very good comment from Peter V. Bluebag. A Walker got six weeks for a racial slur. Now it's and it's a it's a good observation because and they put it up I think on on three hundred and sixty the other night about you know what Walker got, um, what Clarko got. So so then you're going to have obviously uh, sort of people in the public saying, well, why is one thing worse than the other? Why is race worse than um, mm. uh, you know uh, sexual uh, uh, proclivity? Is that yeah? Sorry, I, oh, I have no idea. I was looking for the right term. Word. I, yeah, I yeah, have yeah. no idea. No, that's uh, that's <laughs> sounds like Bob Catter's one. Remember, he's the legend, Bob Catter. Um, it, no, like uh, the the, the sexual sexual preference. Yeah, <laughs> far north think, Queensland. Do you think no, so, maybe? Do you think maybe his his sentence or or his punishment or consequence was uh, less than like let's say for example Walker's because. He was immediately on top of it himself, right? He told Possibly. the club, he said he said three quarter time. He told the club, Ramos, and then he yep. apologized to the player that he said it to, and everything like that. I reckon maybe that's why it wasn't as severe as you know what Walker's was, for example. You know, you know what does my head in about the whole thing? So suspend the bloke, fine him, whatever you want, do it. Right? My issue is, what does he need to do a course to know not to say that word? Mm. Like we all know that you can't use that word. Like it's it's a we know it's a bad word, right? Whether you think it, it should be suspended or not, we, we all know that it's it's one of those words that you just don't say, yeah. right? So he doesn't need a course to tell him that. He doesn't need a course to tell him what that word means and what it means to a community. And I just think it's a lot of um, it's a lot of show behind it. There's just a lot of show behind the suspension. Even his apology was a piece of shit apology. Like it was the most scripted thing I've ever seen. Yeah. So like, yeah. he stuffed up, copped a hit, yeah. and just carry on. on. I think three weeks is harsh for for saying a word, but mm. I get it. Like I do get it. So yeah, I just I don't think it's. And plus, he plays for a team other than Carlton, so he can get stuffed. Though <laughs> they should have given him eight <laughs> weeks. So who cares? I, I, I absolutely, I agree with the suspension. I get it. I just think it's interesting how you work out the severity in the weeks. Right? Mm. Like that that decision is very interesting to me. So yeah. it, it's dri- it's driven a lot. I, I would imagine by um, there'll be interference, there'll be public opinion, all that kind of stuff, and the AFL will be there'll be a bit of trepidation because they'll say, well, okay, we wanted to set an example here. Or we're going to get you know. Um, backlash either way we go and whatnot so it's interesting how they came to that decision but yeah um peter, peter, peter v blue bagger in the chat finn lace and misgendered an essendon player thinking they'd win a finals game <laughs> told you the uh the bad effort against essendon <laughs> finals can't say it you can't say it oh jeez. Uh, good about this like good chat. Like that. the essendon scum all right Predictions, predictions. Uh, for those watching along, let us know what, what you think the winning margin will be. Uh, best on ground and leading goal kicker. George, I'll throw it to you first. Uh, yeah, no, definitely get in the chat um, while you're in there. Hit the like button if you haven't already done so. Um, love seeing your engagement in the chat. Um, Carlton by 15. Um, 15? Carlton by 15. Yeah. Goals. We just can't I, smash teams, can we? Goals. No, I, 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 yeah, I, I've been... I've been Pretty okay with the, with the yeah, predictions this yeah. year, so I'm going to stick to my gut feel rather than my heart feel mm-hmm. or any other appendage feel. But I'm going to stick to my, my gut feel and uh, say <laughs> can't buy 15. Um, Bog, um, I I'm going to go with um, Louis Vuitton. I mean Christian Dior. Dior, Dior, Dior. <laughs> Louis Vuitton. No, I, I'm I'm going to back Harry again. You know, I said he's going to mark everything and be a BOG against North. I'm I'm going to back Harry again. I think he's going to he's going to come back and have a big one. I'm, I can't wait to see him respond to to you know not his best game last week. So, um, 
and leading goal kicker with four, marking absolutely everything again. Um, and yeah, not not a nervy finish, but we you know we get over the line and no injuries, please. But yeah, nice. Mus- nice. Uh, Carlton by thirty four points. Carlton by thirty four points. We we'll win by thirty four. Best on ground. Best on ground. Uh, Blake Akers is due. Blake Definitely Akers. due. You for a big game, <laughs> <laughs> and um, Charlie and Owies are going to kick. <laughs> Charlie and Owies are going to kick nine between them. Charlie for five and Owies for four. Poor That'll be his best ever game over there. I'll yeah. take it. Hey, yeah. Look at the poll yeah, result. <coughs> yeah, fifty fifty. Okay. There you go. Peter V blue bagger, uh, Peter V blue bagger blues by thirty points best on ground Walsh Lou hundred points and Charlie to kick nine nine points or nine goals if you could just clarify that please uh, Monique <laughs> Carlton by forty five and best on ground Adam Saad Cameron margin sixty two points best on ground Walsh with twenty nine and two goals leading goal scorer Kerno with four Oz Carlton by thirty six. Um, and Monique pointing out that it's actually Blake Acres 150, 150th game and Christian Dior's 100th as well. That's right. I think Voss had a milestone. Was it a 350 as player and coach or something? I read somewhere, I think. Nice. Awesome. Uh, all around. I'll take it. Nice. There you go. Andy, what, uh, what do you got? Um, as always, I'm fairly confident. Uh, I reckon we'll win by 12 goals. I think, oh, but how, how did it yeah. move from 10 to 12? I like nah, it. We're, we're going 12 because who was it? Cameron said Walsh would kick two. I didn't account for Walsh to kick two. <laughs> so 12 goals. Um, I'm going to say best on ground. I'm going to get out of left field. And I am going to say, hmm. I'm going to say Nick Newman. I reckon Newey's going to kill it. I reckon he'll get 28. And I think he's going to kick a goal. You know what? Wow. Nick Newman is going to kick a goal. Put everything on it. Put everything on it. <laughs> um, and leading Campbell goal scorer, Harry Mackay. Harry Mackay is going to score five. Charlie's going to score four. It's going to be a repeat of the North game. Just saying. But Nick Newman, 29 and a goal. You said 28 a second ago. Oh, well, 29 now. <laughs> And so two goals. Carl. And two goals. Maybe three. Where's Carl? <laughs> Maybe four. <laughs> Shout out to Carl. <laughs> Love you, Carl. Uh, hey, Lid. Oz, <laughs> Oz, was, uh, Oz was tossing between Walsh and Kerner for best on ground and then made a decision to go with Walsh uh, and Monique, uh, Monique Charlie to score five. I reckon Carlton will win. I reckon it's going to be a tight start to the game. It's going to be hotly contested just because of the fact that Adelaide is under media scrutiny at the moment with their with their poor start. So they'll come out hot and firing. But then I think over as, as time ticks on in the game, uh, Carlton will start to get um, get on top of them um, and, and, and take it away from there. I reckon Harry's going to come back into form. He was goalless last week against Fremantle. I reckon he backs it up with a, with a solid performance and will be the leading goal scorer with four. And you just can't go past Walsh. You can't go past Walsh as best on ground. I reckon he's going to take it away. With, a lot uh, of expectations on, on the kid. <laughs> it's just what you come to expect from the ah, Gary Ears medal. Winner. So that's what I'm thinking. Just, just I'm quietly, Harry must sleep like the most comfortable man in the world. When I seen him at uh, Adelaide Airport, he was carrying the biggest pillow I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> this was like a like a pregnancy pillow or something like that. So I don't know. He mu- he must be just comfortable as bro. I, I haven't seen anything like it. So mm. on you, I Harry. reckon it's a sleep it's well, a pillow filled with the hatred from Moose. <laughs> <laughs> he sleeps peacefully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm it's not nice. going to buy it. It's <laughs> nice uh, that we don't have to travel seven and a half hours to the game this week uh, mm-hmm. and stay there for two nights. It's good that we're just uh, making our way down to, to Marvel. Well, for, at least for you guys, it's only 15 or 20 minutes. For me, it's still three and a half hours given. <laughs> <laughs> um, but nonetheless, it's good to be back at a newly renovated Marvel Stadium. Um, Ramadan's over, so we'll get to enjoy some of the food and options that are available and the beverage options. 
halal ones for us. George, you know, obviously not allowed to drink, so you'll have to go with the halal options as well. Order. Order. Um, and it, it's, a, it's a sold out game. GA is sold out. Um, Carlton posted it a little earlier today. I was, I was hoping to get his ticket for my son, but unfortunately I won't be able to. I missed out. And the fact that obviously Legends Lounge, Legends Lounge has raised their prices to $50 for a kid's ticket is abhorrent. It is disgusting. Uh, and if anyone is selling a cheap, cheap ticket, let me know. Um, <laughs> other than that, <laughs> other than that, I'm excited for this week's game. Um, it's good to be back at Marvel. Uh, if anyone is is going and you see us, say hi. Always welcome to uh, always willing and welcome. Want to have a chat with everyone? We can we we possibly can. Um, gents, it has been nice. Carl, if you're watching along, we miss you. We love you. Love um, you, Carl. And on your car, mate. we will no, see no. you all. Yeah, I was going to say, someone has to say it. <laughs> we will see you all uh, Saturday, Arvo, and after that for the review. Until then, it is Sayonara from the Monday Blues. Take it away, Mus. Andy? No, you. George? <laughs> Sikino, no. no. <laughs> Love you, Carl. After baggers. Thanks, there guys. in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. <clears throat> oh.